Hi, I am Mo. And I'm Amir. We will talk about obstructive jaundice. Well, he will talk about obstructive jaundice. I'm just the animation guy. All right, animation guy. Let's start the video. We only got five minutes. Okie doke. Bile is produced continuously by hepatocytes. Half the bile produced runs directly from the liver into the duodenum via a system of ducts, ultimately draining into the common bile duct. The remaining 50% is stored in the gallbladder. In response to a meal, this bile is released from the gallbladder via the cystic duct, which joins the hepatic ducts from the liver to form the CBD that opens through the ampulla of bacteria into the duodenum. And so, any obstruction in this path will cause what is called biliary obstruction which could be due to causes inside the liver or intrahepatic, and causes outside the liver or extrahepatic. Today we will focus mainly on extrahepatic causes. This can be divided into three main causes. Any obstruction from inside. And the most common cause is gallbladder stones. Or causes in the wall of the bile ducts like infection or malignancy as cholangiocarcinoma. And finally, obstruction from outside like pancreatic head tumors, pancreatitis or sotocysts, right? But how do you assess a patient with obstructive jaundice? You need to take full history including age, also if there's any pain and its characteristics, malignancy red flags, systemic symptoms, gallstones and previous biliary surgeries. What about clinical examination? General examination include any jaundice or ectrus. Any signs of weight loss or lymphadenopathy. If there is pain with high fever and chills think about associated cholangitis. In abdominal examination look for palpable gallbladder or corvsia sign, palpable masses. Right upper quadrant pain if associated with stones or cholecystitis. And how you investigate the obstructive jaundice. Firstly lab investigations. Full blood count, to look for increased white cell count or neutrophilia in case of infection, and chronic anemia is suspicious of malignancy. Liver function tests, to look for derangements in bilirubin and liver enzymes. In case of extrahepatic biliary obstruction usually ALP is raised more than ALT. Prothrombin time may be prolonged because of malabsorption of vitamin K. Urine bilirubin is present in extrahepatic biliary obstruction due to excretion of conjugated bilirubin in urine. Imaging investigations include. Ultrasound scan is the first line investigation to look for gallstones, CBD dilatation and masses. MRCP is a sensitive non-invasive method of detecting biliary and pancreatic duct stones, strictures or dilatations within biliary tree, also sensitive for detecting tumors. The RCP has a diagnostic and therapeutic benefits as through visualizing biliary tree, injecting contrast, sphincterotomy, removal of stones, and inserting stents and drains. Also percutaneous transhepatic cholangiogram or PTC and endoscopic ultrasound are diagnostic and therapeutic tools. But what about management? Hello. Hi Mo, so what about management? Well, treatment for extrahepatic biliary obstruction is mainly surgical. Cholecystectomy plus or minus on table cholangiogram is the treatment of choice for symptomatic gallstone disease. Surgery for obstructing neoplasms depends on the primary site and extent of the disease. Another option is bile duct reconstruction surgery for bile duct strictures. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. See you later. Bye.